In this video, we're going to talk about hyperbolas. Now, again, just like parabolas, just like ellipses, there's a lot of reading. I expect you to do that on your own before we get into the examples. However, I do want to go over the definition of a hyperbola. Now, a hyperbola is a set of all points in a plane whose distances from two fixed points in the plane have a constant difference. A little bit different than an ellipse. In ellipse, the two fixed points have a constant sum. In, an, in a hyperbola, they have a constant difference. The fixed points are the foci of the hyperbola. The line to the foci is the focal axis. The points on the focal axis midway between the foci is the center. The points where the hyperbola intersects its focal axis are the vertices. So again, we're going to be finding vertices, we're going to be finding foci, we're going to be finding the center, things of that nature. Again, just like we do with ellipse and parabola. And then all this mathematics leads down to our equation when the hyperbola is centered at the origin x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. <clears throat> now, a little bit different than an ellipse. a squared and b squared will always be in the same place. If x squared is over a squared, then the hyperbola will open left and right. If y squared is over a squared, the hyperbola will open up and down, which is exactly what happens here. Now, the Pythagorean relationship, what we're going to have, instead of a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared, our Pythagorean relationship will be c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared for hyperbolas. Now, we have the standard equation. Now, the transverse axis is the main axis. The conjugate axis is the minor axis. So you can think of the transverse axis as the major axis. The conjugate axis as the minor axis pretty much means the same thing. Now we do have a drawing lesson here. How to sketch the hyperbola. Again, it's just like drawing the ellipse. You draw your rectangle with A and B. However, with a hyperbola, you draw the intersecting lines, so you draw lines through the diagonals, through the opposite vertices of that rectangle, that will be your ellipse. You'll be doing this again on your project for chapter 8. Now, we do have a chart here for hyperbolas, the center is 0, 0. Then the standard equation, you'll notice that the only things that change are x squared and y squared when we're talking about the standard equation. If x squared is over a squared, the focal axis is the x-axis. If y squared is over a squared, the focal axis is the y-axis. Again, semi-transverse is the same as semi-major. Semi-conjugate axis is the same thing as semi-minor. The big change here, then, is the Pythagorean relationship. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. That's the same for both the hyperbolas. And then we're also going to have asymptotes here. The asymptotes for if it opens left and right will be plus or minus b over a x. And then if it opens up and down, the asymptotes will be plus or minus a over b x. Let's actually get into this in example one here. Now, just like we did with the lenses, this pretty much looks like the same thing. We need this 36 to be a 1, so the only way we're going to get it to be a 1 is dividing by 36. So really, this will be x squared over 9 minus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. Now, a squared is equal to 9, which means a is 3. b squared is equal to 4, which means b is 2. Now, unlike ellipse, a squared does not have to be the higher number. a squared is always the left one on the ellipse. Now, our c value, because c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, our c squared is equal to 81 plus 16. Oh, sorry. a squared will be 9 plus 4, rather. So it'll be 13, which means c will be plus, or, or sorry, c will be the square root of 13. 
Okay? So that's what we have there. So now we have our vertices. Judging by this chart here, since x squared is over a squared, x squared comes first. Our vertices will be plus or minus a, 0. So we have plus or minus 3, 0. Our foci will be plus or minus c, 0. So plus or minus the square root of 13, 0. Now when we look at B, again, this 112 needs to be a 1. The only way we're going to get there is dividing by 112. So we'll have x squared over 16 minus y squared over 7 equals 1. a squared equals 16, which means a is 4. b squared equals 7, which means b is the square root of 7. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So it'll be 16 plus 7, which would be 23. That means C will be the square root of 23. Your vertices then, we plus or minus A0, so plus or minus 4, 0. Because X squared is over A squared, so that's why we have that there. Our foci, we plus or minus the square root of 23, 0. Not that we're the other way around. If it was y squared over 16 and x squared over 7, our vertices would be switched. The x's and y's would be switched. Now, if we want to graph a hyperbola using a function graph, or we need to solve the equation for the of the hyperbola for y, as illustrated in example 2. Sometimes, though, we might need to find the equation first and then solve like we're going to have to do in example 2d. Now, in order to solve this equation for y squared, or for y, first we're going to bring those, this y squared over 16 to the other side, make it positive, and the 1 over here to make that negative. So if x squared over 36 minus 1 is equal to y squared over 16. Now we're going to multiply both sides by 16. Then we're going to take the square root. That means y will equal plus or minus the square root of 16 times x squared over 36 minus 1. Now, when we put this into our calculator, we're going to have the positive square root first, so positive square root of 16, then x squared divided by 36 minus 1. And then we'll have the negative square root. And I'll zoom 6 this right now. Not quite sure what it's going to look like. There's our, our hyperbola there. Our center will be at 0, 0. Our a value is 6. That's why our centers, our vertices are plus 6, minus 6. Let's actually move this out a little bit. Let's make it negative 25 to 25. Both ways. There is our hyperbola. Now, like we said in, in the directions, we might have to find our equation first. Now, what we'll see, we'll notice that since our foci are plus or minus 3, that means C will be 3. Our conjugate axis is 4. That means because our conjugate axis, we can also say it's our minor axis, that means this will be 2B is equal to 4, which means B is equal to 2. Now, we also need to find A. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared, which means A will equal the square root of c squared minus b squared. Well, c squared is 9, b squared is 4. That means a will equal the square root of 5. Now, to find your equation, our center 
is actually at the origin of this case. So, and because it goes 0 plus or minus 3, if we look at our chart, it says 0 plus or minus 3. Actually, we're going to have y squared over a squared. So, we're going to have y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Here is the equation now that we need to solve for a. So what we're going to have, y squared over 5 will equal x squared over 4 plus 1 by bringing this to the other side. We're going to multiply by 5. Then we're going to take the square root. So that's what we'll have. Now let me put this into a calculator. That's for what the hyperbola will look like that you just created. As you can see, the center will be at 0, 0. Your foci will be at plus or minus 3. Conjugate axis is 2. You can see that there. In example 2b, because the hyperbola has a vertical focal axis, selecting a view of rectangle is easy. When a hyperbola has a horizontal focal axis, we try to select a viewing window to include the two vertices in the plot and thus avoid gaps in the graph of the hyperbola. So again, when we choose the horizontal one there, we're going to try so we don't have a gap near, near the vertices of the hyperbola. We're going to try and choose a window that's a little better suited. 